guys, Dr. Elaine Polonese here, the Mommy Makeover Specialist. I'm going to be going over some videos uh, with uh, Mannequin demonstrating the different techniques that I use for a Mommy Makeover. So we're going to be talking about Tummy Tuck, Lipo 360, we're going to be talking about breast surgery, breast lift, breast augmentations. So all the elements that make up a Mommy Makeover. Uh, so we're going to be using a mannequin to demonstrate that. You're going to see the different layers of skin, the different layers of tissue, how we do things, how we mark things. So really exciting, but great videos to answer all your questions. So here we have um, our mannequin that we're going to use to demonstrate a lot of things uh, when it comes to a tummy tuck. So first we're going to go over the anatomy because I get a lot of questions about, you know, where is the fat, where do you make your incision, where do you do liposuction. So I want to show you um, the anatomy using this mannequin. So first of all, obviously we have the skin. But once you go through under the skin, through the skin, you're going to notice that there's two layers of fat. So the first layer is called superficial fat, and then under that is called a deep, a deep layer of fat. And when we're doing liposuction, we are mostly doing it in the deeper layer of fat because that's where you have a thicker layer of fat and that's where we do most of the volume reduction with liposuction. And then in the superficial layer of fat at this level, that's where we could do more uh, liposuction like abdominal etching, where you can get more contour and definition. But you know, you have to be very careful because if you're very aggressive in this superficial layer, then you can create contour deformities and irregularities and those are things obviously that you want to avoid. So again, skin, you lift that up, superficial layer of fat, deep layer of fat, and then underneath, that's where we have the abdominal muscles. So these are the rectus abdominis muscles and there's two of them. And then in between there is the space between them. That's where we do our abdominal etching. We also do etching along the cross lines here to get that abdominal definition. So, using all of that, we're going to demonstrate which level, where we do the lipo, and we're going to be showing where we do the incisions for the tummy tuck. So, now we're going to show you uh, the different types of cannulas and the things that we use for liposuction. So, there are a lot of different cannulas or tubes that we use to do the liposuction. Uh, I typically use one that has the holes on one side. Uh, that's my main one that I use to do the sculpting because when you're doing the liposuction, you, you know where the holes are and you can direct the suction where you want it. Um, and then there's another one that's a little bit more aggressive. As you can see, it has a basket tip, like a flared tip. And that's one we really use to do more etching or sculpting. Or if pa patients have had previous liposuction and you really want to address and sculpt an area that where the fat maybe is a little more firm, you might want to use this one. But the cannulas are um, placed on this hand device here and it's called power assisted lipo because when you turn it on, it vibrates as you can see back and forth and that allows us to do the liposuction just a little easier. So again, for the lipo, we would have made a small incision through the skin and then the cannula would go through that incision and then like I said before, it would go um, typically in under the superficial layer of fat, right above this deep layer, and the liposuction will be done right there at this level. So this is what we're doing when we're doing liposuction. We're going back and forth in that layer. But the important thing is, you see, I always know where the tip is, and that's very important. So if you think of it, it's almost like playing a violin or a cello. You see, the, the bow is just gliding across the surface of the, uh, of the abdomen, but it's never, angled this way, so you're never actually stabbing anyone with liposuction, it's just gliding back and forth. Always knowing where that tip is, and that's how we do liposuction safely. So here we're going to demonstrate the markings for an abdominoplasty or a tummy tuck. So obviously in abdom with an abdominoplasty, we're going to be removing a lot of excess skin of the lower abdomen, so you want to mark out an area that's in the right above the pubic hairline. So first, of course, we, we mark the middle, just to have a reference point. And then we'll mark an area right above the pubic hairline, straight across. And then that line will extend up, typically towards the hip bone. So you have to feel where the hip bones are. So just about there and there. And then we would extend that ex incision laterally, like that. And then 
you would extend all the way up here, outlining the entire area of skin that you're going to be removing. Now the belly button also, there's an incision that goes around the belly button because the belly button stays where it is. The belly button is like a stalk or like an apple core and it remains attached to the muscles underneath. But when we outline it, the belly button stays there, but then we can really take the skin, excess skin, pull it down, tighten it up, and remove all of the excess skin, covering the belly button like a shade, but then we make a new opening and pop out the belly button. But this outline kind of shows you the extent of how much skin you can remove with the tummy tuck, keeping the incision really low, so on the bikini line, so that when the patient is wearing a bikini or any undergarment, the incision will be covered. But that's the area that we're gonna be removing. But when we're all done, the only scar you'll see is the one that's down here, really low along the bikini line. So now we're gonna demonstrate the approach for an abdominoplasty. So we're here in the OR, the patient has already been prepped and everything is um, ready to go. Uh, I've already marked my incision. So again, the tummy tuck incision starts right above the pubic hairline and then angles up a little bit towards the hip bones. And that's going to allow us to really remove all the excess skin and pull the skin down. And then the incision will be made just like that, going all the way to the hip bones. And that's how you know, we excise the excess skin first. And then once we remove the skin, then obviously we're going to see the first layer of fat. And we've already would have done our liposuction, but we excise these layers of fat as well. And as we get deeper, we're gonna to get to the deep layer of fat And then that finally leads us to the muscular layer. So we've already lifted everything up like this, and then we can see the muscles underneath. Now, typically when people are getting a tummy tug, they may have a muscle separation. So this line here between the muscles would be much wider. And that's where with sutures, we would actually stitch the muscles from the top. Uh, so right here between the breasts, uh, all the way up, it's called the xiphoid. That's that spot right, the breastbone right there. So from there, all the way down to the pubic area, we would tighten those muscles with sutures. And what that would do is reconstruct the core and put the muscles back where they belong. So that's called muscle plication. That is done uh, with the tummy tuck in addition to the liposuction and removal of the excess skin. And once we've removed that excess skin, then we pull down and tighten up and close with the incision really low in the bikini line. I'm gonna be demonstrating uh, my different approaches for a breast augmentation. One question I get asked a lot is, you know, where are the incisions for a breast aug? How long are the incisions? And what are the different approaches? Well, essentially you can have three different approaches for a breast augmentation. And depending on, um, uh, you know, patient anatomy or depending on uh, particular differences on each patient, you can choose different approaches, but they all will allow us to place the implants under the muscle in the same pocket. So what are the different approaches? Well, the first thing you need to do is mark the midline. So we'll go right down the middle, marking the midline because you want to achieve good symmetry. And then you can have what's called an inframammary approach, which is basically placing a small incision in the crease under the breast, as you can see over here. Um, so you could measure it out and mark a very small incision in the crease under the breast. And this incision can be as small as an inch or an inch and a half. And that's really all you need uh, to place the implant. The other incision, it can be inferior areola. So that's basically placing an incision just under the areola. Um, this is a good technique that can hide a scar very nicely just under the areola. And those scars are almost imperceptible. You can hardly see them by the time it's three to six months. And then finally, we have what's called an axillary approach, and that's placing a small scar in the armpit, right at the top of the armpit, 
and then through there you can do a dissection, get under the muscle and place the implant that way. So three different approaches, axillary, inferior areola, or inframammary in the fold. All three approaches are uh, great. They all allow us to place the implants under the muscle. And the difference is the reason you would choose one over the other is sometimes patient preference, sometimes anatomy, but they're all really good approaches to do a breast augmentation. So we're going to demonstrate now how we place the implants during a breast augmentation. So here I've already made my incision. Now obviously on this mannequin, this incision is much bigger than uh, what we would use uh, during a real breast augmentation surgery, but it's in the same area. So we've made an incision in the crease under the breast. So we, we would have made a small incision and the skin obviously is very stretchy, so you can stretch it out a little bit. So we, that's how we're able to place the implant through a small incision using a no-touch technique. So why is it important to do, to do a no-touch technique? Well, with implants, you definitely want to keep the area, obviously, as sterile as possible, but you also don't want anything to come into contact with the implant. So, for example, you know, we use gloves that don't have powder. Um, you want to make sure that you don't even open the implant until you're ready to put it into the pocket. So the implant is placed using this funnel, and we just take the implant, pour it into the funnel without even touching it, and then from here, it can go right into the pocket like this. As you can see, squeezing the implant into the pocket and it goes in without touching the implant and that's how we do a breast augmentation. All right, so now we're gonna demonstrate my approach and my uh, markings for a breast lift, also known as mastopexy. So again, the first thing you wanna do is mark the midline because you wanna achieve good symmetry. So we go down the middle. And then you want to mark what's called the mid-axis of the breast, or a line that goes down the center of the breast, pointing toward the nipple. So we would mark some reference points here and here, and then go straight down the center of the breast. And that's, that line is going to guide me as to where I'm going to reposition the nipple. Now, my approach for a mastopexy it ha has an incision that's called a circumvertical, which means it goes around the areola, and then straight up and down like a lollipop. So the incision will go around the areola. Now the nipple and the areola always remain attached. I don't remove them. They remain attached, but we are going to be shifting them, shifting them up. So that's why we do make an incision around the areola. And then there will be a scar going down the vertical under the breast. So that's going to be like a lollipop. And the reason for that is what we are removing is excess skin. And then finally, there will be a short horizontal scar in the crease under the breast. So it's going to look like a lollipop or an upside down letter T. Now my incision down here is usually kept very short so that it's hidden under the breast so you wouldn't see it normally because the traditional technique for breast lifts would call for a scar that's like an anchor shaped scar that goes from the center of the chest you know all the way to the side of the chest, and these are very noticeable scars, which is why I don't use them. So my technique for a breast lift would be this upside down letter T or lollipop incision, keeping this scar really short and hidden under the breast. And that's how you achieve that lift, that shape with a breast lift or a mastopexy.